Friday, November 17th, the Friday before Thanksgiving, and trying mightily to find something to write about that would be thankful and positive. Uh, the best I could do posted nearby is something thoughtful, if not thankful, and uh, nonpartisan, possibly anti-partisan as opposed to partisan. Um, the tax bill is on front stage, front and center, and uh, it, it's such a strange time that it's hard to read the reaction to the tax bill. We know how to read the tax bill. We don't know what it will be in the mechanics of Congress. Money bills come out of the House. The Senate has its own bill. The House has passed its version. The Senate version has many, many differences that are unresolved with the House bill. The Senate will probably try to vote on this, not next week, but the week after. And if they pass their version, then the two versions go into what's called a conference committee, where in the dark of night and behind bolted doors, um, a committee made up of House members and Senate members hammers out a compromise. And typically, no matter what's in that, it will then pass. Um, we still have doubts about whether it makes it through the Senate. Or, or indefinite pronoun reference, what it is or may turn out to be. Um, one of the benefits, uh, possibly hazards or burdens, of advancing age, I've lived through other tax reform legislation. You know, watched it come together and seen the result of it. Uh, this bill is not a tax reform. Tax reform simplifies the tax code and it broadens the tax base. There's more people pay taxes, but they pay less in tax. This bill will add to complexity in many places. And all it really does is, is to reallocate who pays and who will stop paying, and the net result of a relatively minor increase in the deficit. Uh, in a tax reform designed to be revenue neutral, the idea is to have a benefit for more people who receive tax simplification or tax cut than the tax revenue that you have to raise from others. The greatest tax reform in modern times in the United States was 1987. It may have been the best tax reform in the history of the Republic. And it removed anti-productive, anti counterproductive, tax loopholes. Um, an example, um, until 1987, you could write off any interest of any kind. You could write off credit card interest, car loan interest. Um, you could also write off as an investor. If you bought a securitized interest in an apartment building, in the first year that you bought it, you could write off as many as eight times the amount of your initial investment, which led to the construction of a hell of a lot of apartment buildings that the country didn't need and subsequently went into foreclosure. Now, removing loopholes of that kind that were destructive and in exchange pulling down tax brackets, ideal tax reform. Since 1987, which last time I counted is 30 years, in our desperate need for more revenue to fund principally entitlement programs paid to ourselves, we've already raised brackets back up. We have also broadened the tax code. We have also closed loopholes the loophole closure primarily among high earners, defined as an individual making more than 250 grand a year. Many loopholes that survived the 86 tax reform have since been closed. So this thing is, um, I'm trying hard to be even handed here, very hard. Um, this thing is so weird that uh, markets aren't reacting to it. Markets always react, not to this. So either markets are sound asleep or there's nothing in this bill to react to. There's a pretty good likelihood that this bill, if enacted, won't have any economic effect at all, except as it reallocates the tax burden on, from one party to another. And it, it, it is doubly or triply or quadruply weird in that Republicans are now behaving like Democrats. These are the same Republicans who objected to any increase in the deficit, whatever, for any reason, who are now proposing one. 
And as a result, they're in the same mad scramble to find new people to tax so that they can give money to their buddies, which is what they used to criticize Democrats for doing, which was fair criticism. Uh, one of them noted in the copy nearby, uh, I found this morning, I hadn't known, that buried in this thing in both versions, both the Senate and House version, in 1997, 20 years ago, when you sold a primary residence, the new rule was that if you'd lived in that primary residence for two of the last five years, you, you got your capital gain tax exemption, which is not infinite, but it's significant. Buried in this new legislation, it will have to be five of the last eight years. So if you move in a five-year period of time instead of two years, which math is funny, but that would be two, two and a half times as long, um, uh, no exemption. And that's not loophole closing. That's theft. The capital gain exemption was enacted into law a long time ago in different forms to try to protect households from increased tax burden due to nothing other than inflation. As the value of your home went up, you got an exemption from taxes because there wasn't any income that you created, it was just an inflated value. That's not a loophole. That's just stealing to give money to big corporations. <clears throat> On that cheerful note, um, as said nearby, um, either pass this turkey or don't pass it. <laughs>